Greetings. It is I, Junk, back again. And I don't have a whole lot specific to talk about, but let's talk about this video first. What you're watching is I'm going to take a really old robot out of storage. I'm going to take a golem, an unleveled golem out of storage, and we're going to turn it into uh, something we can run in Champion League, though, you know, how well we run it, different story. But uh, temper your expectations, it's a golem. But we are going to take it and level it up and deck it out. This, uh, this baby's been waiting a very long time to make its debut. Let's actually uh, do a solid for the old girl and pretty her up. So while that's going on, hey, I don't have a ton that I wanted to talk about. Just a couple things. First of all, how are you? I'm hanging in there myself, you know. Uh, good days and bad days, and we're entering a tricky season for me, but I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll make it, you know, with the help of, of all y'all, I'm sure I'll make it. Uh, yeah, I know one thing I wanted to talk about was I've been waiting to get that new Fenrir pilot, and it wasn't in any of the data pads, so I'm like, where's the Fenrir pilot? And I see you have to win a leaderboard to get it now, and I hate that. I actually hate that. It, it's somehow worse than even just directly paying. It's like, let's, it's basically, let's play big bank, take little bank. Where if you've got the biggest bank to spend the money to win the leaderboard, you can get the new pilot, which I've heard is very good. I've seen, you know, the YouTubers who are Pixo partners running with it, and it seems very strong. I can see why it would be very strong. A, a Fenrir with, um, an immunity to damage mitigation on its defense. And the way it's written, it seems to me like, it, say, it shows you get 50 defense points, but then it says, is immune to damage mitigation. And it's not clear to me if the 50 is what's immune to damage mitigation or if all defense points are immune to damage mitigation, in which case, oh my goodness, you could build a very scary Titan Slayer there. <laughs> and I'm very tempted to try. But yeah, we're seeing me right now trying to get through my pilot storage to find something to put on here. And, you know, what do you put on a classic robot that has no active modules? You know, basically you can use use your manis to get rid of your manis. Uh, or just wait for them to leave and come back. <laughs> that's a little, that's a little uh, community humor there. You can use your Adrian to get your 5%, which is usually going to be your best bet. Or you can use, if you're going to build something, like, specific. Like, you can use the Raphael there if you're going to put flamethrowers on it. You know, you can use the Medea if you're going to put dots on it. I don't know exactly what's going to be on here, big picture, so let's just put Adrian on it. And let's just put the new weapons on it, too. I'm going to have to level up that subduer to do it, but... Yeah, I'm just seeing, does anything else strike my fancy here? And No, not really. No. Subduer it is. So, have you noticed this? I don't know if it's because I've got too many weapons. When I drag to a weapon and stop, it kicks me over to the left. Is that just me? This game has got so many bugs. Why, why, don't, why can't I search for these things? Quality of life, guys. Where's the quality of life? Anyway. Yeah, I, I don't like this idea that you should have to win a leaderboard to get a pilot. I find that troubling. Because, like, this, it's worse than pay to win. You know, you're literally pitting community members against each other. It's like, pay the most to win. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I'm not concerned that I won't win the leaderboard. I'm concerned that it makes the game even less viable as a thing to play. And you shouldn't be gating... You shouldn't be gating stuff like that. It's bad enough that it's gated the way it is. And now you're making it gated where, like... <laughs> the number of people... It's going to be, like, five people who have it. And then they're, they're going to be the haves, and, like, then everyone else can just, you know, twist. I, I exaggerate five. It's going to be, like, 500 people who have it. So anyway, that, that that was the first thing on my mind. The second thing, you know, I saw a Reddit post that was like, don't do this. <laughs> so this, this being, don't play old bots with new weapons because it makes people think the old bots are good. And it's like, um, I don't know, man. I don't know what to tell you. This is this is the content that is is interesting for people, number one. Number two, I don't think people are going to be rushing out there getting golems. Uh, if, if, you can, if you know where to get a golem... Let me know. I'd be curious to know. Just leave that cut in the comments below. But yeah, this is uh, this is kind of where it's at. And at least for me, when I'm playing the game, this is what excites me. Like, I'm not excited to see... 
I don't know, a random like Ocho with with, uh, rockets. I'm excited to see, oh my gosh, someone brought a Natasha to Champion League. That's very cool. And this could just be like when you're in a in a world where everyone's pay to win, that the stuff that's exciting in pay to win is different than the stuff that's exciting in in free to play brackets. Where I could see in, in free to play, I'm much more interested about like how do I make this Mercury viable, and telling me I could put ultimate weapons on the Mercury doesn't help me. And and maybe that's a video worth making too. But in Champion League, I'm just here to amuse myself, you know, like. I really am just here to amuse myself. <laughs> I don't know if I can make that any clearer. This is why I don't like call, I don't like to call this a channel. I don't like to call this a channel because it's it's not, I'm not trying to do a thing exactly. It's cool that, that we're all hanging out and that it's working that way, but I'm not like, you know, like, share, and subscribe and go buy your junk mail merch and join my Patreon and support me on Rumble and whatever else. It's like, that's not what we're doing here, man. I'm just a dude who likes to play some War Robots in Champion League, and it's cool that, that we get to hang out and do it together. <laughs> so, like, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to do stuff that amuses me like this. I was very happy when I was leveling this that, for some reason, when I'm leveling a lot of the times, the server's very slow lately. Have you noticed that? Where, like, I've gotten to the point where I'll just quit the game and load back up, sometimes try to restart the iPad, just trying to get to the point where I can hit the speed up button to get to the next level. Ugh. This is another quality of life thing where it would be nice to say, if I've got the resources, just let me use a slider, slide all the way over to max and just max it and save myself the time because this is just a, it's a time waste and it's an exhausting thing if, you know, <laughs> you're trying to put weapons you've never used before on a Dagon, so you're there trying to level six things <laughs> up to 2.12. 2 uh, I actually do Mark three this one, which, you know, I don't always Mark three a weapon. I guess strategy for tokens is probably, for upgrade tokens is probably worth talking about. Because upgrade tokens have shaped up a little bit more differently than I expected, and in some ways exactly as I expected. The part about upgrade tokens that shaped up exactly as I expected is that there, there's a fair number of them. It's not really something that's going to limit your access if you're willing to spend money on them. I think now, after spending so much, six or seven bucks is what it cost me for an upgrade token at a, for like the first three every day, and then it's it goes up to like 10 or 15, depending on the offers per token. So in terms of weighing, is this a good deal or not? I'm like, well, if I've bought fewer than three, six or seven bucks is an okay deal. And then beyond that, 11 to 15 is a good deal. Oh, and we're going to start leveling our Adrian here. Um, a thing about leveling pilots for Gollum, and I think it's true of Boa too, and it may be true of Shoots, is that these three robots have two armor expert skills that give you more durability. I don't know if that started as a bug or started as intentional, but either way, they do have double armor expert skills. And they have the tough guy skill available. So you can actually get them. This is going to be a, a fairly beefy robot. Like the thing that will make it non-meta isn't the isn't the durability. It's going to have plenty of durability. Plus, with the Shy Drone now, it's going to go out there with, you know, close to four hundred k health. I think. Don't don't quote me on that. We'll see. I think it's it's like it's like three fifty or better, k health, and a last stand. So it's actually fairly solid. Oh, advice on on any on pilot uh, pilot skills for weapons if you have mixed weapon types on a robot ignore the weapon pilot skills which which is terrible because it it makes a lot of builds not viable that would be viable like i would love to run a mercury with 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 ultimate punisher and avenger it looks sick i would love to do it the problem is to make the punisher and avenger viable you need to have the skills that give them better shot grouping and like uh, acceleration mode. So that would be a total of four pilot skills devoted to the weapons on a Mercury. I don't know, man. I don't, that, that seems like a not, a not viable build. You're way better off using, you know, <laughs> putting those two, putting those two mediums on a Rogatka <laughs> and giving it the pilot skills it needs. 
or just building a behemoth with the Avengers where you can have your acceleration mode and shock grouping. Usually, I mean, that, that, that's, that's the really severe example because usually you don't need two pilots because usually you need one, which is the shot grouping, but acceleration mode on the Punisher is an absolute must. And they're incredible weapons. That I, I think that's the limiting factor of them is that they can go through last stands. Like they can ignore... D- 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 had an aneurysm there. They can ignore pilot defense like that or like defense skills. But in order to do that, <laughs> you need to have the... In order to make it viable, you have to have the acceleration mode. I didn't level up Cautious Pilot right away here because I was not actually sure. I remember... Oh, and you can see I've got the second armor expert skill here. I think, are they both 15 now? Yeah. It used to be they were, one was like 12 and one was 18 or something like that. And then when they standardized armor experts, they both got hit to, sent to 15. It's fine. But I didn't level Cautious Pilot right away because I wasn't sure I was going to keep it. Um, but another thing about these older robots when you're leveling a pilot for them, most of the skills are not helpful. You have very few of the specific skills that you get on later robots. Like, I was surprised that they had uh, Tough Guy, or, uh, no, sorry, Cautious Pilot. I was surprised they had that. They don't give you a lot to work with, so you end up having to take one of those, like, um, you know, when you're in your last 30% of your health, you get extra speed or extra defense, or when the enemy has three beacons, you get something. I mean, I hate those skills. Like, conditional skills just mean you're going to be operating without a skill most of the time. But they don't give you a lot of options, so... I will say, you know, mechanic is a must, obviously, here, because you have no other method of healing yourself other than motherships, and my mothership actually doesn't have a heal on it right now, because I'm using mute. So I get a durability extender, which is kind of a heal, but it's also kind of not, because <laughs> it doesn't actually heal you. So, yeah, that's, uh, if, if you find yourself in a position to make a golem or a boa, double your armor experts and get mechanic, because you, you'll have the space anyway. I don't even remember if that 30% nerf on the test server... The, on the test server, there's a 30% nerf to the rust weapons, quote-unquote, and I haven't seen it talked about with Subduer. It feels like sub, not a lot of people have Subduer yet, and if you look at, like, the Champion League stats... The Reaper is a more common weapon in Champion League than the Subduer right now in Champion League. It's a more common weapon than Subduer. Because that's how uncommon the Subduer is. Uh, and I could see that. I mean, it was, it, was, it was tough to get four of them for a Behemoth. It took me most of the meta to get four for the Behemoth. But the problem with a situation like that is also the problem with the Mute Mothership. That Pixo doesn't play the game. And they base their nerfs on what their stats are telling them. So if their stats are telling them that there's too many people playing this robot or using this weapon, they'll nerf it. But if people can't get it, then too many people can't play it. So I don't know if they're going to nerf Subduer as part of the Rust Weapon nerf. They might. Or if they're just going to assume that, well, nobody's playing it, so it isn't too strong. Yeah, I was trying to pick a paint job, and I'm looking here, and it's like, I like the red picking up the brown here a little bit on the phoenix and the flame. But the blue, the, the blue of the standard matches the dot weapons, and it sort of pick, picked up a little bit. There's a little bit of blue there in the subdue. I'm like, let's just go classic. And let's toss this bad boy in where the retro revenant goes. And we're going to get into a couple games after that. Uh, the second game is actually actually the first game I played where we have a little bit of a run and yeah, let's try to get some kills with this monster. Let's get into it. Alright, we're here on Yamantau. And let's drop in the golem, the new old golem, the old new golem, old new stock golem. This was the third or fourth game I played with the Golem, I think. And I've always loved... I always loved the Golem back in the day, too. Uh, Boa was really my, my go-to in, in, in the classic, but uh, I like Golem, too. I always felt like Boa, you got a little bit more durability. 
for the cost of a light weapon that you didn't want. It was harder to hit because it wasn't as wide. Okay, we've got a Blitz running towards us here, and as soon as he hits my 600 meter range, I start firing. I doubt the Blitz knows what I'm in from that distance, but it's going to discover my weapons are very, very real and very, very modern. Trying to dot him up, rust him up, get the assist. Not what I'm here for, but I'll take it. So, I know that my, despite my impressive durability for a classic robot, I don't have a lot of mitigation skills. I'm not going to be able to get into the get into the mix, really. I'm trying to stay mid-range support and use the bridge here to block shots as I can. So very convenient we got the side with the bridge. Now I can reach into mid a little bit, and that's what I'm going to try to do. And see, there's got... Is that like a Raijin or something? Yeah, it looks like a Raijin. They've got shooting at me with Prismas. A bunch of guys in stealth that are creeping up on our secondary. I'm just trying to find shots into mid and dot and rust as I can because we got the subduer and then the other two weapons are uh what is it deceiver and which is the dot one for small is it trickster yeah i think trickster deceiver and trickster so i hit rust there on the ocho managed to get the links i, I dot up and rust up that ocho enough that he hides but it doesn't help him get, i get the double kill kill streak in a golem in champion league in 2020 Four. Jeez, 2024. I'll take it. I almost said 2023. Okay, so now I've got an Ocho here. Until the Mute Mothership comes up, I've got no way of winning a shootout with an Ocho. So I walk back towards the bridge, and my thought process is, the further right I go, the further out he has to come from cover to shoot at me. So at least my teammates will get a better shot at him. Although I don't see my teammates shooting at him, so that's a limiting factor. And I get blown up by the Prismas. Okay. Playtime over. Let's drop in the Unknown Ocho with the Rust and Dot. The Ultimate Flame Ocho, I, I tell you my thought process in the Ultimate Flame versus the Rust and Dot here, is that they're not in an easily identifiable, like, Titan target, and they're not all bunched up together. So, I, like, the range is going to benefit me more. If they're all bunched up in one place and I can run in with the flames, I can do maximum damage. Oh, so I, I mute my... Uh, my mirror match here, I mute the enemy Ocho, which is so frustrating. They they need to mute, they need to nerf the mute, and they're not going to nerf the mute until enough people use it that they can see in their spreadsheets, oh, it's being used too much. Well, it's hard to get now because you have to spend ultimate, uh, what is it? You have to spend upgrade tokens on ultimate luck to get it. So I managed to dot and rust this hybrid Lynx up. He's gone. And I've hit now two mutes on this enemy Ocho. So he's probably frustrated, and guess what he's going to get now? Mute number three, bye. Uh, I may have actually knocked him out of the mute. <laughs> That's the thought that counts. So, oh, this Eiffel with the new rockets takes me out, but that's okay. I know how to play that game. Let's play Eiffel with new rockets. Eiffel goes up, and he spent all his rockets on me. And I dash to his cover. He goes down. Sometimes people wonder, like, how do I feel about nerfs? Like, do I care when all these things get nerfed? And it's... No, if you only have one robot and it gets nerfed, then you care a lot. If you have all the robots and they get nerfed, what do you care? You just play a different robot. So, the only way in which nerfs are going to make me upset is if they nerf every single robot in the game. In which case, I don't know, play a different game, maybe. Ooh, the crisis. There was no good thing for it to do. As soon as it shot, it was gone. I, I shoot a little bit into this shield because I want to see is there a splash on these rockets. There is not, so don't do that. The Fafnir comes over. That's helpful, thanks. I wasn't sure I was going to get you out, but did you decide to stand in front of me? And I have gotten the enemy team's attention just a little bit. Rook, I thought if Rook was going to throw himself off the edge, I was very excited for that. But no, he, he managed to land, which is fine. He manages to land and get cut down by rockets. Mute Mothership, just for the extra health benefit there on the Seraph. Something's shooting me from the side, and I can't see what it is, but I'm guessing it's a Miramitz, because that's what I think they have there later. Is that another Eiffel? At any rate, they're all bunched up on Beacon, on, on their secondary now, Beacon D. So I drop in the Flame Ocho, because like I said, when they're all bunched up and the Flames can reach them, this is the time to drop the Flame Ocho. By the time I get there, they've kind of dispersed. <laughs> That's okay. That's cool. I just walk myself up and have my, help myself to the beacon. I think maybe I can... Yeah, I'll, 
I, yeah, I, I try to get this guy just as he, like an Inquisitor, I guess, just as he gets out of range. You don't manage to do it, but a Hawk drops in for me to shoot at, which is helpful. Flip the beacon, and I'm walking forward, trying to, like, get to the Hawk. And I, I must, I don't know, the, the Repulse or something just threw him up where I can't see him. So now this guy drops in, and... Oh yeah, there's the Hawk again. I can't... You know, I never noticed before how much the standard Minos looks like the Eiffel. I wasn't sure at first, is this a Minos or an Eiffel, until he turned around and I saw his horns. And I'm like, what, what is this thing right here? And there it is, the horns, okay. At that point, I'm like, oh fine, Minos, pff, I'm not concerned about Minos. I'm a Titan, basically, and you're basically not, so yeah, no. No interest in Minos, not concerned. I'm getting shot at by a Minos, a Miramets, a Hawk, and an Eiffel, and the Eiffel has the ultimate shotgun weapons. And uh, I find it mildly inconvenient. Waiting for that Eiffel to come back so I can mute him. There we go. Sorry, Eiffel. Waiting for that uh, Curie. Sorry. Curie. Ao Ming now shooting at me from above, and I'm getting a little low on the health. If that Ocho had turned to fire at me, that would have been bad, but my ability comes back, and I just start flaming up the Ao Ming. And the Ao Ming decides he doesn't want that. It drops down. Unfortunately, looking at their beacon bar, they're fixing to get five capped right here. So they're shooting at me, and they would take me out if the game was, I don't know, a minute longer. But it's not. Victory. Let's check the scoreboard. First place, nine kills, four beacons, two assists. 7.4 million. Pretty good performance. Good performances on the, on the other side, too, but my teammates were just better at, at grabbing beacons than... Uh, the enemy teammates. That was kind of it. It was like they, they held on to center for a while, and as soon as we pushed through it, they kind of didn't manage to retake it. So let's get into the second gamer, which is really the first one I played with this with this new golem, and uh, have fun on the farm. All right, we're here at Springfield with our new golem. This was the first game I played after leveling up that golem. And... We've got 357,000 health. Shy Drone gives us a last stand. No active modules, no passive modules. So, as we've discussed, I'm trying to find a mid-range thing I can shoot at without getting too in their face, especially because I can't move too fast. I'm not trying to take any farther beacons on a big map like this. And what I find is this Typhon kind of lazily drifting back and forth. You know... It's hard to say that there's ever, like, gameplay I just, I don't respect. <laughs> but I don't respect the gameplay of this Typhon. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're shooting at a golem, and you're still down to your last stand as soon as those, those dots tick. But I can't let him get our beacon because uh, my teammate just decided to hide, so I gotta ditch the golem and go out here, push this guy back off. I'm getting shot out now by... Three robots and an orbital strike. They managed to take down quite a bit of health. The Typhon actually gets away with its sliver of health, and I'm not going to chase it because I would rather have a conversation with that leech and that uh, incinerator behemoth, it looks like. So, leech links me, don't care because I'm not going to shoot at it. I'm just walking over to the beacon. After the beacon flips, we'll have a conversation. But first, I'm taking your home. I can't tell, is the behemoth coming for me? I don't think so. But it's not gonna matter. Behemoth gone. Leech gone. All right. Aljun goes up. Little flame throwers for flamethrowers, but I don't think it's gonna help him much. I notice I'm getting a lot of fire support now, which makes me a little nervous because I didn't really intend for the whole team to follow me. Well, the invader's in the air, I activate my ability, knock him back. Which means he's not even contesting. He gets taken out by him. Now I'm thinking, okay, why is there so much fire support? I've got at least two teammates here with me. Three teammates here with me? Yeah, okay, that's too much. Th this is too many teammates, so now I've got to leave their beacon. Because if your whole team is on one beacon, like, all of my team is here. Look, right now, two guys haven't even dropped in. 
And that's a recurring theme, but is that for some reason there's just people who just not drop in on this map and just wait. And it becomes an issue. Uh, Nether with Magnetar here. Gonna try to lock me. And he might succeed because I don't think I have my immune amps loaded yet. There's two immune amps on this on this Ocho. Another orbital strike. Uh, yes, orbital strike. The favorite tool of uh, of the weak robot. There's that Typhon, and he's missing two weapons. <laughs> my general thing about if you're in a robot missing weapons, I might take a swipe at you if you're on the way, but I'm not going to chase you down. I prefer you to stay in a broken robot. The more time you're in a robot that can't do max damage, the better for me. The nether ditches to bring in one of these two. I don't know which one it was. The Hawk, which is going to die very quickly. There's that Typhon. You see, when you're contesting a beacon, I have to take you out. Wouldn't be my choice otherwise. This Ocho is going to come in on me, and this is where I get to play the Orbital Strike game. Sorry for that. Hit the laptop. Um, get to play the Orbital Strike game. Because the, the, the mute's lo loaded up. Hit him with the mute. That's going to stop him from using his ability again, because it's a 10-second thing. Oh, managed to hit him with the flames as the luchador jumped. And now we're back to... There's another nether. Didn't this guy ditch this nether? This is the same different nether? How many nethers are in this guy's hangar? Another magnetar nether. Alright. Well, he's on the way, so... Make sure we purge him. All right, now we're at the farm. And we've got a situation where we've got the three out beacons, they've got the two home beacons. We're contesting our own home. Nobody at their home, let's go to their home. If you look at the Ocho's health bar, it's at about half health and 741,000 health. There's a durability extender on the mute. So every time I mute someone, I get 15% of my durability added to my total health. Part of the reason why when these Ochos get on a roll, another orb, every time you hit a beacon, there's an orbital strike. Oh, my dear sweet summer child. Rook versus the flamethrower Ocho. This is not a good matchup for you. He figures that out, but it's all too late. And the Rook who was once so confident comes raining down about my shoulders. Heading back towards our home. And I see Beacon C and D are flipping. This is where I start to understand. Okay, it looks like we're down a player. Is it five versus four there for a minute? And I'm winning all of the one-on-ones I get into. Uh-oh, Crisis and an Indra. That takes me way down there to 50-some thousand health. I managed to mute the Indra. And a friendly Indra comes in to get the kill. They took a big chunk out of me. And I was far enough down that I said, let's see what's happening. I saw they have somebody taking back their home. I drop in the Eiffel to stop it. This turns out, in hindsight, to be an absolutely clutch play. Like, if you're looking back for the play of the game, I would argue that's it. The decision to drop in and save the beacon, beacon rush style. Because <laughs> you can see now, we're looking at three on five. And somebody will drop in on our side after this. I don't know, people will not drop in for some reason in this game. Going in to try to purge mid because we need the beacons. Good bit of damage done here on this hawk. This is like the third hawk we've seen in these two games. Is hawk having a renaissance? Is hawk getting a buff I don't know about? Man. Hawk is one of those robots where on paper it should be good, and when you play it, it just does not feel satisfying at all, to me, personally. Like, Natasha feels satisfying with the same basic kind of loadout. Why doesn't Hawk feel satisfying? Let me know if, if you can explain why Hawk doesn't feel satisfying. I'm out here shooting my least favorite robot, the Ophion. Ophion has replaced the Weather Chickens for the most annoying robot in the game. And the worst, I say it every time, the worst thing about the Ophion player is that they think they're good. No, you're just, your robot's just broken. Worse than the Ocho, believe it or not. Say what you will about the Ocho, you can shoot at it. The Ophion, most of the time, you can't even hit it. And when you do, the hitbox is broken. Anyway, Ophion gone. I don't feel okay. I, this is a good matchup for me, Lynx versus Eiffel. I'm getting shot by something at the side, not worried about it. But they still have the beacon, and we're going to find out they dropped something in that... I can only show love for the behemoth, <laughs> the homing bullet behemoth. Hey, if I got to get taken out, I'm, I'm honored it's by a homing bullet behemoth. That's a beautiful thing. Mm. Here comes the flamethrower, sorry, the uh, 
the Dot and Rust Ocho. Ever since I switched them both to the limited edition, it's hard to keep them straight when, I, when they first drop in. Yeah, I don't put the YouTube thing in my name. I, I don't know, man. I, I get always be closing. I totally respect that. If that's your grind, for me, it's more like... If I've got to tell you, you know, it's... If you got to tell the person at the door of the club that you're famous, are you famous? So, believe me, enough people have noticed. I get, I get targeted enough that I'm not concerned people are confused about what I'm up to. This is where I think the Lynx just kind of goofed. Um, it was never going to be a good matchup. It would have been better to like try to contest a different beacon that isn't our home, personally. Uh, speaking of homes, the Dot Rust Ocho walking back to Beacon A. And we're getting down on the beacon bar. It's getting really close. They've got the beacon advantage. We've got a little bar advantage. I wish we'd been on comms like this had been a team because then the Skyros and I could have coordinated and gone for different beacons. It would have been much better. Instead, it is what it is. We go for the same beacon and we lose the farm. So I start running towards the farm. And this is where I think we've probably lost the game because I'm getting close to the farm and wouldn't you know a Newton lifts me up to stop me from getting there so I'm getting shot at by a Lynx and an Ming trying to get to the farm I'm like oh we're gonna lose because they have the beacon advantage they're gonna take over our bar advantage so I'm trying as hard as I can to get this beacon and I'm thinking the Newton's gonna lift me up I'm in I'm not gonna make it on here do manage to take out that Ao Ming he dropped a little too late for his healing to save him uh, beacon advantage coming back. They have uh, they have more players than we do now. So I'm running in. It looks like three on one at this point. We got a guy drops in. People drop in late in this game. I managed to shoot and mute the Newton, but he's standing on the beacon. I'm not going to be able to flip it in time, even if I take him out. The bar is really, really close. They've got the beacon advantage. We've got the bar advantage. How's it going to end? And I hold my breath because I just don't know. And we get the win. Woo! <laughs> that was closer than I wanted it to be. Closer than I would like it to be ever. See how we did? 9.2 million, 5 assists, 11 kills, 8 beacons. That is a solid game. No matter how you want to cut it, and I think I was doing... I think some of my robots were a bit stronger than some of my teammates' robots, just going by the damage totals. But no no shade to the teammates, because 7 beacons, 5 beacons. This game was, on the ba was one on the basis of uh, who was grabbing the most beacons, and I really appreciate everybody in the team who did that. <laughs> so... If you've made it this far in the video, you made it to the end of the video, hey, congratulations, thank you for making it here. If you're a dog or cat at home alone, I'm sure you're a good puppy or kitty and your parents are going to bring you a treat really soon. And I will talk to you again really soon. Later.